LockDate is a great feature that enables you to control who can and can't post transactions prior to a certain date. Let's have a look at how it works within the software. You can access LockDate in three different areas, when running a month end, when running a year end, and also via the settings menu. From the settings menu, simply choose LockDate. This shows whether the LockDate is switched on, and if it is, what date you've got it set to. It isn't switched on currently in our case, so we'll tick the box, and then we'll change the date and set it to the 1st of January 2021. You then click OK. You return to the Accounts Desktop, and that's it set up. If we now backdate a transaction prior to that date, we'll see the message that appears. So in Bank Accounts, we'll choose the Payments option, and choose Bank Payment. It doesn't really matter what we post at this stage, we just want to demonstrate the messages that appear when you try and backdate a transaction prior to the lock date. So we'll accept the default bank, and then enter a date prior to the lock date that we've set. You should notice that we don't get a message just at this stage. So we'll enter a reference, we'll ignore the extra reference, choose a nominal code, then we'll accept the default department, leave the fund blank, and also the project reference and the cost code. We'll quickly enter some details, enter a value, and then tab past the tax code and the tax column, and we're ready to save the transaction. And a warning message then appears. Now the key point here is it's a warning. It says that the transaction that we've entered is dated before the current lock date that we've got set in this case is the 1st of January 2021, do you wish to proceed and post to a lock date? So the key with it being a warning is that it will let us post it, but it gives us a warning that we're trying to post prior to the lock date. So it will let us post that transaction. So we click yes. We'll then click close. That returns us to the accounts desktop. Now the key to understanding how lock date works is understanding how it works with access rights. So we're going to go into settings and then choose user management and then users. We're now going to amend the user Mac. So as we can see, Mac is user type standard and he has a full access levels. So he has access to everything in the software and we're just going to amend his level of access. So we highlight the user and click edit. And as Mac is flagged as a standard user, we have a level of access option on the left. What we're going to do in this example is scroll down to the settings option. And then if we expand the settings menu. And then scroll down. We can then remove the option for lock date settings. So essentially our user Mac has full access to the software except for lock date settings. So we'll click finish and then save our changes and close the users list. We're now going to demonstrate what happens when a user that doesn't have access to the lock date settings option tries to backdate a transaction prior to the lock date. So we need to log off. So open the file menu, log off, and then log in as the user. So if you enter the password, click OK, and then we'll go and post exactly the same transaction as we posted earlier. So back into bank accounts, and then choose payments and bank payment. Again, we'll accept the default bank, and again, amend the date, entering a date prior to the lock date. So in this case, we'll enter the 10th of December, 2020. Again, you should note there's no message at this point that will happen when we click save. So we'll enter a reference, tab past the extra reference, enter a nominal code, accept the department, and then tab past the fund, the project reference, and cost code. If we then enter some details, enter an amount, again, it doesn't matter what that is, and then tab past the tax code, and the tax, and then we'll save it. This time the message that appears is an error. So it's an error instead of a warning. And it's an error because 
the user that we're logged in as doesn't have access to the lock date settings option. If we did have access to that, then it would appear as a warning and it would give us that option. Do you, do you want to post this transaction? Yes or no. But because we don't, it gives us an error. And the error states your transaction date is set before the current lock date of, in our example, the 1st of January 2021. If the date is correct, please refer to your system administrator or accountant for advice on how to post to a locked date. So it doesn't give us the option, do you wish to post this transaction, yes or no. We're just told that we can't post this. So you click OK, and then you have two options. You can either amend the date to a date that isn't prior to the lock date, or in our case, we're just going to clear the form, and then click Close. As you can see, it's a very simple but effective feature. Let's just quickly log back in as manager so that we have full access to all options in the software. So back to the file menu, click log off, just click yes to the prompt, and then log back in as manager, enter the password, click OK. So remember, you can amend the lock date at any time. You can pop into the settings menu, choose lock date, and then if you don't want to use the feature, maybe you try it and don't like it, you can always come in and switch it off. However, if you do have it switched on, it may be that you run the your month end at the end of January and then you advance the date to the 1st of February. Again, to stop people from backdating transactions to a period that you've essentially closed off. So if you've generated your management reports, for instance, at the end of a month, you don't then want your colleagues backdating transactions that would then impact on those figures. So nice, simple feature. Remember, it's all about how your access levels and who has access to the lock date settings. So if you do have access, you get that warning if you try to backdate. If you don't have access, you get an error. Let's just click OK. We're back to the desktop and that's our demonstration complete.